All right, line A5, learning task number nine, calculate three-phase power factor correction capacitors. So last video, we were talking about where these things should be connected. Now we're going to go and talk about how they need to go and be connected. Inside of your binder, there's going to be a couple of examples uh, that, uh, that are going to be placed inside there. We're going to go through the first example. Actually, I think there's only one example inside of here. We're going to go through. Now, I'm going to go through in a different order of calculations. I'm going to get all the same stuff as what they had, but I prefer to go through in just a different order because it makes more sense for me. By all means, follow what the book does. If you prefer their order of operations, great doesn't hurt me. Uh, but if you aren't sure which one you prefer, I'll just kind of explain why I'm doing it my way as I'm going through it. And then you pick whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, it is entirely up to you which one you plan to use. And neither of these is correct. It's just going to be different than what you saw inside of the book. So be forewarned. All right. The book tells us about a motor load. Let's go and draw that thing up there. We've got a motor load that is going to go and be actually I'll move it over to the side. So I got lots of room for calculations. I've got a motor load that is 60 kilowatts of useful work that it's putting out. Average power factor is a 70% power factor that we are going to go and have. And it's connected to a 240 volt supply. Uh, 240 volt three phase supply. And then they want us to go and find our three phase line current. So I line. They want us to go and find the K bar capacity to go and 100% correct. So we're just going to call that 100% K bar. They also want us to go and find then what our I line after correction, so we'll just call that I line correction, would be at that point. And then they want us to go and redo our calculations and try it for a 90% k bar that we're going to our 90 percent that we're going to collect connect it to and then they want us to go and find what our i line will be once we correct to 90 percent okay straightforward enough uh 70 percent power factor 60 kilowatts i can start to go and build out my triangle and that's going to be the very first thing that i'm going to go and do is i'm going to start with a fairly large triangle. Starting across the bottom of my triangle over here, I'm going to go and have 60 kilowatts. That's going to be the true useful work that's put out by my motor. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and look for my VA that I'm going to go and have. I'm going to go straight to the VA because I have my kilowatts as well as I have got my power factor. And if I go and take this formula over here, watts is equal to VA times power factor. I see that I can go and rework that. I can divide power factor out of both sides, which would cancel it out of here, divide it out of this side. And so then what we would end up with is we would end up with this formula here, power, or sorry, watts divided by power factor is going to go and give me my VA. That looks pretty straightforward. We're going to go and do that. We're going to go and take 60 kilowatts divided by 70% power factor. 60 divided by 0.7 or 70%, which tells me that I'm going to go and have a KVA at this point of 85.714. We're going to place that thing in it with three decimals right now, 85.714 KVA. The very last thing that I have is I am going to go and have a VARS that I am going to need to go and find. I don't know what that VARS is, but I've got a couple of different ways that I can go and calculate it. The first way that I could go and calculate it would just be to straight up use Pythagoras. So we're going to go and take 85.714 squared minus 60 squared, and then take the square root of that entire thing and then I'm going to go and have, uh, or sorry, that's going to go and kick out what I would have for my VARs. So let's go back to our calculator. We're going to try that. So here we've got 85.714. We're just going to go and square that. Squared minus 60 squared. And then we're going to take the square root of that. And we end up with a value 
along the side there of 61.2. Okay, so I've drawn my triangle here just a little wrong. I'm just going to go and redraw that triangle a little bit. This one is going to become 61.2. This one is 60. So they're closer to being the same size at this point. That's using Pythagoras for this. The other way that we do have would be for us to go and use um, something inside of our calculator where we can go and convert back and forth from polar to rectangular. I'm just going to show you real quick how to go and do that. We know that we've got 70% power factor. So what I can do is I can go and take my inverse cosine, inverse cosine of my power factor equals my angle theta. We're just going to quickly go and do that. And then I'm going to step you through what we do next. So I'm going to go and do inverse cosine of 70. Oops, sorry, let me delete that. 0.7, which is a angle of 45.57. 45.57 over here. Perfect. Put that in there, 45.57 over there. 45.57, if I would have my 45.57, I can then go and take that value and I can go and punch it in as if it were a polar. I can take this 85.14 at an angle of 45.17 and then that's gonna go and break down into both an X component as well as it's going to break down into a Y component. I'm going to show you how to do it real quick. We don't need to do it so much for this one, but it's handy for some of our other stuff. First of all, I'm going to go into my mode cam all the way over till I'm in complex mode. And then I am going to go into this, which is going to be my polar format. And now I can go and take these values 85.714 at 45.57. 714 angle 45.57 and then I'm just going to hit equals and it tells me that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go second convert to xy and the first number that it's going to go and show me is going to be my x value 60 great we already knew that 60 kilowatts my second value is going to go and be my y value which is 61.2 Okay, that was just a little aside. We don't need to go and do that for this one because in this case, it's a little bit more work. Where this trick comes in really handy is anytime that I'm given a KVA and a power factor, I could just take the KVA and my power factor, convert the power factor into an angle, and then it'll instantly spit out my X and Y as being these two values over here. But we're not gonna do that right now. Okay, let's maybe erase this X and this Y. What we have at this point is we have got our total KVA for the system. What we need to do now is we need to go and figure out the number of amps that we have on the system. Now it's a 240 volt system and it's a three phase system that we have. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go and use my KVA formula. Uh, VA is equal to E line times I line times root three. And if I want to isolate for I line, I need to divide both sides by E line times root three over here. And if I do that, VA divided by E line times root three, I'm going to go and cancel these two out here and this one over here. We've got this formula over here. Let's go and punch in values for this. We're going to go and have, we've got 85.14. We have got 240 volts for my line voltage. So we're going to punch that through on our calculator. 85.714 divided by, and we're going to go and take our value of voltage, 240. And we're going to take root three for that one. So divided by 240 times second root three like that and equals a value of 0 0.206.
Uh, 0.206, now take a look at our value of 85 that we have up here. That was in K values, or thousands. So really, the true value is one, two, three decimal points over here. My total VA was actually 85,714. So if that one needs to be over moved over three, we can move three over on this one, which would tell us that our line current is 206 amps. Let's drop that in. It is the same as what you have inside of your book. We just found it by taking our kilowatts, converting kilowatts to VA, and then taking our VA and converting it into line current over here. Okay, I'm going to go and erase a bunch of this over here. And then we're going to go and solve the next section. The next question that they ask us is, what size of a KVAR capacitor would I need to go and have to go and correct this one? Uh, well, that's pretty easy. We've already figured out the size, 61.2 KVARs lagging. So we would need to go and put in 61.2 KVARs leading to bring us all the way over to a unity power factor. So this one, 61.2 K bar lead. Make sure you put that lead onto it so that you understand exactly what's going on. Okay, so now uh, they asked us for what would my line current be if I would correct it to 100%? That was that correction that they were asking for over here. Uh, well, if I correct it to 100%, we would no longer have this 85.714. We would no longer have the 61.2. We no longer have this. The only thing that we would actually still have would be 60 kilowatts. And there would be no power factor on it because it would just be purely resistive. So I can go and use that same formula that we were using before. VA is equal to E line times I line times root three. Uh, in this case, my VA would be 60 because we'd have corrected all the way back down. We basically folded that hypotenuse all the way down to there. Uh, but in this case, we have that VA, what we're looking for is the I line, so we're going to divide both sides by E line times root 3. Same with this side here, uh, root 3 times E line. That's allowing us to cancel these out over here, and we end up with this formula. So we're going to take a VA of 60,000 now and divide it by 240 times root 3. We'll stick it as a full 60,000, oh, 660,000, divide it by 240 times root 3, which gets us to a value of 144.3 amps. This would be a lovely change from what we had before, 144.3 amps that we have. Uh, we saw that originally we had 206 amps. If we correct everything, take it right out with this 61.2 KVAR capacitor, we would then have 144.3 amps that would be left inside of our system. However, that's a little bit dangerous because if we go all the way to unity, and then if we would have another inductive load inside of our plant that would shut off, all of a sudden we could be in a leading power factor. So what's more common is that rather than us reducing all the VARs down to nothing, it's far more common for us to go and reduce the VARs down to a smaller number. And usually what we're looking to do is we're looking to go and get to a 90% correction. All right, so if we get to a 90% correction, there's a whole pile of things that are going to go and change inside of our system. Uh, we are going to go and change our total amount of KVA. It's going to change, it's going to go and lose that amount of KVA. We are going to go and change our total amount of K bars. We're going to drop a bunch of them out of there. And we are going to go and change our phase angle that we have on this thing as well. So let's go and work with the only things that we know stay the same. And that's going to be watts. Watts never lie. I always say this. I believe it. Watts don't screw me up. They shouldn't screw you up as well. So we're going to stick with that 60 kilowatts. And we are going to go and start working backwards off of that. Well, I know what my target power factor is of 90%. So if I have got my 60 kilowatts and my target power factor, I should be able to go and figure out a target VA. That's a relatively simple calculation. 
if I take my watts divided by my power factor, that is going to go and equal my VA. So we're going to go and take 60, we're going to go and have 0.9, and that's going to give me my new target value of VA. Okay, so 60 divided by 0.9 equals 66.66666666, and it just kind of keeps on going from that point forward. So we end up with a new target VA of 66.666 kVA over here. It just repeats on into infinity. Now that we have that value, we can go and once again use Pythagoras. Just change that value over there from 85 to 66.67. Or we can go and use this as an actual angle a magnitude and an angle. We're going to go and use this thing as a magnitude and an angle just because I like it in the calculator because then it spits out what I need for my target uh, bars. So we're going to go and take this value, 66.6667, at an angle of, oh, sorry, 66.667 at an angle of, and I don't even know what the angle is, but I just know that it's the inverse cosine of 0.9. So I'm just going to bracket that. And that tells me that I have got a value of 60, because we're in xy. Note that we're in the little xy over here. 60 as being my x. If I take a look, I see that that checks out my x value of being 60. And I can go second function. And I see that my y value is going to become 29.06. So this value over here, our new target value, is going to become 29.06 k-var. That would be our final triangle over here. 66.67 kVA, 60 kilowatts over here, and 29.06 k-var that we would have over here. Originally, we started out with 61.2. Now we've got 29.06. So whatever size of capacitor we need is going to go and be the difference between those two. Let's just take the larger number. We'll subtract the smaller number out of that one. Sixty one point two. That's my original K bar minus twenty nine point oh six. That's my new target K bar tells me that I need to go and have a K bar correction capacitor of 32.14 K bar. So my last cap that I would be looking at here would be a 31 point, oops, sorry, let me just go back to this one here, 32.14. 32.14. Var cap. And that would bring me down to 90%, which is close enough that I'm not going to get any penalties, but it's still far enough away that I don't need to worry about accidentally going and bumping over top of, you know, that critical range and going into something that's a leading type of power factor. The very last thing that we have to go and do now is we have to go and say, well, what would that bring my total line current down to it? So my kilowatt co component is going to go and remain the same uh, off of this thing. My K vars are going to be, uh, be at 29.06 and my KVA is going to be at 66.66 KVA. Inside of the book, they show you a different method. I don't like that method. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and use my KVA and I'm going to go and divide everything else out until I can go and get just the current. Once again, VA is equal to my E line. Oops, I don't know why I drew a root there. Uh, is equal to E line times I line times root three. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide out the E line and the root three. We're going to carry them over to here. Once again, E line and the root three. That allows us to go and strike these out of here. We'll just erase all of those. And for our I line, it's going to be VA divided by my E line times root 3. So I'm going to go back to my calculator over here, and I'm going to go and put in my new KVA at 
uh, 90%, which is 66,667. And then I'm going to divide this by 240 times root 3. And that brings me to a value of current of 160 amperes. So my corrected value of current, 160 amps over here. If you compare your corrected current that we just got to a 90% correction compared to my uh, overall current that I had before, 206, uh, that's fairly significant. You know, we're looking at a 45, almost uh, 50, you know, 46 amp difference that we're looking at over here. That's a significantly large size of machine that you can now fit onto your system. Uh, and you'd be back up to that same 206. So just frees up a bunch of capacity onto your system. Uh, and I do also want to go and compare the 100% correction. If I take a look at the 100% correction compared to the 90% correction, I see that there's not that much gain. You know, there's only maybe another 15 amps that I'm going to go and pull off the system, which isn't enough of a reward that I'm going to risk going into that leading power factor. So just try to stay away from going into those, you know, leading power factors if and when you can. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to go and talk about is just that uh, when you buy power factor correction capacitors, they're usually going to be rated inside of KVARs. And KVARs means that these things are going to just have ratings that say, you know, 100 KVAR, 50 KVAR, etc. We start usually around 2 KVAR. We go all the way up into the hundreds of KVARs, depending upon the type of industrial application that you're looking at. But if I'm given a capacitor, and we'll just go and draw out over here a cap that we have. Uh, if I'm given one that is rated, it's going to come in as being a 10 K bar. And then it's going to go and have a voltage rating, you know, for 80 volts at 60 hertz that we are going to go and have with this one. Um, and then it's up to me to go and figure out what I would need for current. I need to know what the current draw is because I still need to go and size breakers. I need to go and size conductors, all of those different things. Well, if I take a look at a power factor correction capacitor, my power factor correction capacitor has got a triangle that looks like this. Kind of looks like a vertical line. That's right. It is a vertical line because the watts is so small that it's basically negligible. And the KVA is basically slammed right up against it. In fact, it's so small that we just straight up say we don't have any uh, actual true watts and that my KVARs is just going to be the total rating of it. The KVA difference between KVA and KVAR is so small it's completely negligible in these. So what we can do is we can then go and take that KVAR and we can use our regular VA formula. VA is equal to, once again, uh, I line times E line times root 3 that I'm going to go and have across here. And at this point, if I want to go and say that my VARs are equal to my VA, I'm not able to do that because we're looking at a power factor correction capacitor. And now all I'd be doing is dividing out the E line times root 3. Divide out the E line times root 3 over here. These would cancel out on this side leaving me with VARs divided by my root 3 times my E line or my voltage to my capacitor. We can go and do that. Let's go and take 10,000. Divided by my voltage for this thing was going to go and be 480 E line times root 3 equals 12.028. In other words, we are going to go and have 12 amp leads that we are going to go and need to have off of here. 12 amps that we would feed off of here. You're going to go and use that amperage to figure out conductors, overcurrents, disconnect switch ratings, and anything like that. All right, that's it for sizing these.